Hey, this is Nick with Growers Network in Canacribs. In this episode, our crew took a road trip up to Phoenix, Arizona to learn the secrets behind Grow Sciences from their team and a couple special guests. They launched in 2018 on a mission to be a new kind of cannabis company. And in just two short years, they have grown from a startup to a top shelf contender, creating a super loyal following of consumers hunting down their clean, high quality products. Cannacribs is powered by viewers just like you at home. So please make sure to like and comment on this video and subscribe to our channel. A huge shout out to all of our sponsors who made this episode possible. And if you haven't already listened to our podcast, I'm in the studio, just got done recording an episode. Go check it out. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy and learn something new. Happy growing. Hi, my name is Nate, owner of Growers House, one of the top suppliers of cultivation equipment in the world. I help growers source equipment and put together some of the largest, most advanced cannabis growing operations. I am constantly looking for the top products and methods needed to grow the best cannabis. Join me on a tour where I get inside access to the industry's leading cannabis grow ops. This my friends is Cannacribs. I'd like to tell you all about a brand you probably haven't heard of in the cannabis industry that's making some serious waves down here in Arizona. Grow Sciences is a cultivator bred out of cannabis industry veterans who have an unwavering focus on their team and the quality of their flower and extracts. So much so that many of the connoisseurs within the Arizona market line up at the door when they drop inventory at dispensaries across the state and they sell out fast. We had a lot of fun on this episode as you see collaborations come together with breeders, cannabis photographers, and industry friends. But that didn't stop us from taking breaks to skateboard and practice some jujitsu. Sit back, relax, and let our team take you on this exclusive first look at some of the best cannabis growing operations in the country. We're here on your rooftop, sunrise. I couldn't think of a better way to start the day and uh, tour what I would consider one of the preeminent facilities in Arizona. So guys, why don't we talk about how Grow Sciences came to be? So I started growing cannabis in 1997. I met Mike in 2016. He owns a dispensary in Washington, DC with all the retail experience. I had the cultivation experience and our dream vision was kind of to build something out in Arizona. My vision of cultivation was always the same, the highest quality. When we looked at the Arizona market and the state licensed market, it was truly devoid of quality. We saw that gaping hole in the market. We didn't see any companies talking directly to their patients. It just was a mess. And there was this ultimate race to the bottom. When Matt came to me with his idea, I'd been working on starting a dispensary here in Arizona. I called our other partner, John Adamucci, and was just kind of telling him the story about Matt and, and this vision. There was something though that I knew was legitimate and it was like, all right, if I'm gonna take this chance, you know, I think Matt's the guy that I wanna do it with. So Grow Sciences from the beginning was meant to be a B2B to C company. We wanna make products that delight the consumer. And frankly, we wanna be the best cannabis company in Arizona and everywhere we go. You guys just have this hyper focus on product quality and customer interaction, customer satisfaction. This is a building for Arizona. We wanted to be an embedded part of the community here. However you contact Grow Sciences, inevitably you're gonna end up talking to one of us. And this was built for the patients. And you know, if there's one thing that I'd love to see come out of this, this project we're doing together that we're so excited about is that they really get to see that there's 37 people that show up here seven days a week in it for them yep. and that they're the exact same patient and consumer that's out there. Delighting the consumer is in our DNA and customer service has been mandatory since day one. You know, customer service builds trust and we think that trust is a competitive advantage. Customer service has illuminated a lot of blind spots that I think we would otherwise have, which is so important with the high risk business that we started in this industry as crazy as it is. So I think being accessible and being engaged with the community um, is a driving factor for how we got here. 
So what are the future plans for Grow Sciences? Right now we are actively fundraising to get a dispensary here in Arizona and really, I think, close the loop on the customer experience from cultivation all the way through retail. Uh, and also, we're expanding our facility by about 4X. It's important we don't bite off more than we can chew. Organic growth or none at all. You can't force this. You know, anyone can come to market in Arizona and launch and go, buy one, get eight free. That, that doesn't build loyalty. That builds a one-time purchase, which you may or may not make any money off of, but it doesn't build loyalty. We'd have never done a special. Our specials are transparency, a clean product, having us there, staying in contact, that's building a relationship. We're always pushing the envelope here. We're always taking risks. And I'd love to think that our patients who come to these takeovers or get our text message alerts or are on our Facebook or DMing us on IG know that they are part of this extended team. And in every decision we make, they come up. And I think that is an extremely healthy approach to cannabis. That's how we founded this company. These are our principles. And as long as we're in charge, that's how we're gonna proceed. Well guys, on that, uh, let's climb down this ladder and do the grand tour. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, Matt, so give us the master class. Look, genetics, phenotyping, mothers, teach us. I'm an old timer in this game, right? I mean, I've been in this since 1997. What you're gonna see as you walk this building is basically old school techniques on a larger scale in a search for the absolute most potique cannabis we can provide on a commercial level to the patients of Arizona. And I'm not about reinventing the wheel. People much smarter than me taught me what we do here at Grow Sciences and I stand on the shoulders of those giants. I'm looking for the next gen to really show us the future. I want them to invent, I want them to be creative, ask every question and then take what I started and make it the next grow sciences. So there's 36 family members at GS. They're the biggest weed snobs you and I have ever met. Well, you've traveled a lot more than me in cannabis. Maybe you've met some. They tell me how it is. You know, old man, what are you doing? This is crap. And I'm like, okay, we're out on this. Like, let's move on from that. Um, and we know we have a winner when everyone's thrown darts at it and it survives. So it's super exciting. It's what makes this place in some ways very, very dynamic. And you know, you were mentioning that you're, um, you've actually gotten a little bit more efficient because there's some new technology out where you can DNA test products. Change the whole game. It's quite simply changed the whole game. So back in the day, a year ago, uh, you know, for the last 24 years of 25, I'd get a seed pack, you'd crack it, You'd put them in the flowering room and you'd spend the next 48 hours going psychotic, looking for balls to pop so you know male versus female, right? And you hope you get it out quickly enough so it doesn't seed out the whole room. We've been blessed, uh, the whole community, so we use Delta Leaf right at propagation. So after we've got the rooted clone, we take a piece of the tissue, send it off there, and they sex the plants for us. So before we've vegetated a single plant, we know if it's male or female. That's gotta be saving you, I would say, maybe six figures a year minimum. minimum, easily. I know you guys are on a huge phenotyping push right now, and I really want to get uh, up close and personal with those plants. Showing off what we're doing in this phenotyping room, um, I think you're going to be pretty happy. We are packed in here like sardines. Sardines. <laughs> Absolutely. So let's run through you know, your guys' phenotyping process, because that's what's going on in here. You're in the jungle. Let's not kid ourselves. You're staring at 47 different cultivars. Um, there's 280 plants between these two rows. We're in a massive pheno hunt. What are some of your, uh, I guess, most optimistic strains that you have going on in this room? Okay, optimistic strawberry guava, nose, look. I mean, that's no joke. Nug size, arrangement, look, smell. It's just fire. I'm, I'm beyond excited. So, but the whole room is filled with them. Uh, runs times Mendo breath, Forbidos. It goes on and on, but some of the really special stuff in here is one of my good friends, Umami Seeds, you know, blessed us to run a lot of his gear before he released it. Arizona is going to be the first people to experience his new lineup in rosin and flower. And that's a real honor for Arizona. And it's certainly an honor for us to provide it. And I was blessed. He actually came down here to see and see how his cultivars were doing as we come to the finish line. So yeah, let's bring him in and let's show him what's up. 
So I'm here with Umami Seeds, and I know we're keeping your identity covered, but I want to learn a lot about your company. So first off, you know, you guys are up and coming. You're blowing up right now, and you partnered strategically with Grow Sciences, and they love your product. You know, the reason I like them so much on top of the, the quality, right? When they run new genetics, they can show people what it can do, right? I like them as showcase figures. I get to come back and physically dive through and pick my favorite. You know, for Umami Seeds, uh, what what's your strategy and philosophy for figuring out what you want to bring to market? So Umami is a Japanese term. It means the fifth flavor. That flavor you can't necessarily put like a descriptive term for. It's just, it's delicious, it's somewhat savory. It's not necessarily sweet or salty or bitter, right? It's, it's Umami. So the tagline is flavor over everything. If it doesn't taste absolutely incredible, I'm, I'm less interested in it. I think that's the first bit you, you experience, right? You open the jar, you smell it. You want it to smell amazing. You start to smoke it, it has to taste amazing. The effect is great, but it's kind of the third thing that happens. I like to experience new flavors, but if I have something that I really like, I might bring that back to the table. Never release anything twice, but could use it as a jumping off point for something else, something better. You know? Constantly pushing the envelope. Constantly. New flavors, exciting terpenes. There's so many pla like flavor profiles we have yet to unlock. Every flavor you ever thought exists in the cannabis plant. All of them. You just have to extract you them. Just gotta, yeah, you just gotta find them. Unlock it. You gotta unlock them. Hmm. So for those of you cannabis growers, we actually do have links in the description where you can go to Growers Network and find a full list of all the seeds and strains here at Grow Sciences, including Umami. Umami, now I think it's time for propagation. Let's do it. So I want to give a big shout out to Propagation. Everything starts here. You have a bad clone, you're screwed. So let's talk about the Grow Science way to get a good clone. Okay. So luckily, we're stealing the technique from everyone before us, which is completely fine. That's called learning. They're just taking what they've already cut off the actual branches themselves, scapulating the bottoms, dumping it in the rooting solution, and then going right into the root or cube. And from there, it's a seven to 14 day process, depending on cultivar, with a painstaking process of checking every dome multiple times a day, misting them to keep the humidity correct, making sure the cube's moisture level is correct, you know, which is just have to be super OCD, and just meticulous in nature. And we're very lucky to have Peter doing that. It's kind of interesting because you're using the Grodan tray and then you flip the root right cubes over, cut them. It's like a game of operation. So, Mr. Nick Kuhlman, the gentleman to my left here, my assistant cultivation manager, this is one of his strategies to success with cloning. Please. The main reason is uh, it doesn't fit properly right side up. Wobbles too much, uh, so upside down just keeps it stable. Got Being it. the perfectionist he is. Coolman, the coolest guy in propagation. That's creative, let's leave it at that. Let's talk about production and production numbers. We go about 10% over. On some of them, we're going about 20% over right now. So, yeah. Well, that's, so we end up throwing away quite a few plants, frankly. Look, that's that's the name of the game if you want a top quality clone, you know? I think that in 2021, one of the goals in propagation for us is going to be to actually nail that exact number it takes to achieve that, whether it's 2% over or whether it's 100, you know? Um, what, what cloning gel do you guys use? Well, it might come as a surprise to you, but we actually use Clonex. And yet another surprise would be that Josh from Clonex is actually here. He actually happened to be here randomly at the exact same time we were shooting this. That's crazy. Yeah. It's almost like he sponsored or something. Like, Well, if totally. you're shooting a can of cribs, it's not like you have a top sponsor and that they would get extended time. And luckily, I think you'd always have a top sponsor that's a good product, and that it's, would be that. It's like people, all they, all they want to focus on is just fucking getting paid. You know, I will not sell out for anything. Good. Yeah. We're going to stay true to ourselves. But Josh, friend, this is friend stopping by. Yeah, Josh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, good guy. Good, I love him. He's just... Super big muscles. He's, yeah, he's been, Buff. been to my wedding I haven't had yet, but okay. he, he'll be there. Because I didn't even know you were married. No, it's not yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, Maybe one day. Okay, I hope but, I do get invited. But shots of Clonex all day, you know? But, Till, till the end. That's <laughs> <laughs>
Josh, you know, you're a friend of mine and it's so awesome that you're out here. And why don't we let the viewers know a little bit about who you are and what you do? Sure, so Josh Hughes, I'm with Hydrodynamics International. I'm our senior brand manager. Um, been with the company for 10 years and nearly 18 years in the industry as far as experience with indoor and outdoor gardening. So pleasure to be here. Every time we go to a Crib shoot, like Clonex is there. It's all, it's like nine times out of 10, right? So why don't we tell people about like where Clonex came from? Early in the eighties, there really wasn't anything like Clonex. There was just simple uh, rooting powders that were talc based. And the problem with that is talc dries out the area where the cutting is, where the hormones are in contact with the plants. So our company founders came up with Clonex as a way to alleviate that problem by putting that hormone, the IBA, into a gel form that protected the cut and helped to root plants faster. Well, what I love about Clonex is like, you guys decided to make the gel like this cool, weird, mystic purple yep. color. It lets you see where the cutting is. Yeah, exactly. And the reason for the color is actually, uh, there is a surgical dye that helps protect the cut. Surgical dye, so yep. what is that? Is that like it's, antibacterial? Exactly, yep. It's, it's similar to what they use and rub on you before you go into surgery. Yep, so eliminates pathogens, pat, you know, disease, bacteria, et cetera. Based on the amount of Clonex that we have produced over those years, we have estimated that there's been billions of clones taken using Clonex gel. Maybe we can even say the majority of the cannabis, you know, that people have smoked has probably touched Clonex. Absolutely. One other important point is that it's EPA registered in all 50 states, Washington, DC, and Puerto Rico. Got it, yeah, so a lot of those states that are pretty strict on what you can and cannot yep. put in plants, this one is good to go. Absolutely, yep. And then you guys have the mist too, so a lot of people might not know about that. How would they use it with a setup like this? The owners uh, determined that it was beneficial to foliar the clones and cuts, or even the moms prior to, the moms prior to taking cuttings. Um, it's a profile of seaweeds and aminos that helps elevate the natural hormone levels in the plant tissue. Josh, really appreciate you coming down here to Arizona Absolutely. for the Grow Sciences episode. Always a pleasure. No, you too. Glad I could come out. Appreciate you guys at Canna Cribs, Grow Sciences. All you guys, it's been great. So Matt, we made it into your bedroom. Go through this entire room in as much detail as possible. It's pots, we're in a room, we're in here four to seven weeks, and then we're in flower. Sounds good to me, that's enough detail. You take 10 cultivators, you put them at 21,000 square feet of space, and you say go. Everyone thinks cultivation's this, this really sexy job. It, at the end, you're a janitor. And I think if you're wanting to get into cultivation, you should probably accept that most of what you're gonna do during a day is clean. And that's okay, because look at the end result, you feel it. You feel the energy in the room. And we're basically building on the last 25 years of my life in cultivation. They're innovating, all the new technology. So for instance, when I got into cannabis, we didn't have rolling benches. The only one we use is the Botanicare. I wouldn't build a building without them. We beat the shit out of them and they still make it through. This type of stuff is insane to me, you know, that I would be able to create a hallway. Yeah, and without using the slide benches, you'd probably have 20% less, you know, canopy. Oh, a minimum. I mean, actually the number is about 31%, but yeah. It's not like you're adding additional light. You know, the overlapping light already exists in the room. I'm building out 65,000 square feet in my parking lot, and I can assure you thousands of more square feet of Botanicare slide benches are coming with me. In terms of like feeding these plants, especially in two gallon fabric pots, yeah. it has to be, you know, probably pretty frequent. Yeah, so we're gonna feed plants like this a few times a day, four to five times a day. They're gonna be getting right now pure water. We're at the end, the last 14 days, they're just gonna get pure water. But one of the big things in cultivation is you're starting water. Arizona water is shit. It's unfortunate. It's 600 parts per million to 1100 parts per million of complete fuckery, just to be very frank with you. So we went to a local company here, headed up by the mad scientist, Charles. Uh, it's called SpectraPure. It's located in Tempe. They basically custom built us RRO system. And Charles does this. So he'll come to your building, he'll test out your water coming in, and then he'll build you a system around it. Customer service on point, he'll come to the building same day if something happens and 
We start with zero part per million completely unbuffered water. And that is such an advantage. And that's thanks to SpectraPure handling that for us. And the fact that they're local and that Charles is just an absolute genius, you know, I can't recommend them high enough. You know, it's a tough job keeping especially very frosty, sugary nugs clean. <laughs> and you to make it. it so that, you know, you're not having any powdery mildew, pests, yeah. all the way through flour. I mean, what's your guys' strategy? So let me give credit where credit's due. One of my younger guys came to me about six months ago and said, Matt, let's switch to an entirely organic regimen. Not that there's anything wrong with zero tall used around the world. He said, but would you mind if we, I said, prove it. You know, because we have Procure come into our building every 10 days and they test every single room in the building for mold, bacteria, fungus. So we're gonna know. For us, testing is a way of life and it's not just on the finished flower. Procure is a local company here and they come in and test everything. So we know what our CFU count for mold is in every single room down to our trimming room. And you'll see a flower room like this, even filled with 700 plants at seven feet tall. We raided this room 10 days ago at a 27 CFU count. That's insane. It's all but non-existent. And the acceptable standard would probably be about a thousand. So we are actually now completely organic. To see Nick do that and prove it is humongous. So there's no doubt in my mind Many, many people in this building are gonna have some fantastic careers in cannabis, and I look forward to watching that happen. That's awesome. So, you know, you guys are growing these monsters in two gallon fabric grow bags. So they're two gallon pots, but as you can tell, we're actually only filling it with about 1.7 liters of cocoa core. Or so we use two core, Royal Gold, tried and true. We've got great results with it, fantastic pricing. There's not enough good things I can say about the product they've given us. And you can tell by the rows of bags of it as you come into our building. A lot of cocoa core, when you bring it into your building, you're gonna do a water test on it to test the salt content. We've had other cocoa cores test as high as 600 parts per million salt. Royal Gold is always zero to 100. It's absurdly consistent, it's absurdly clean. And you know, I'll knock on wood when we leave here. Cleanliness is godliness in a grow. I only go with Royal Gold. They've taken great care of us and the relationship will continue until that time ends, which, I mean, they've been in business many years. I, I think they've got it figured out. And for us, they certainly do. Let's also talk about moving the plants into the room. What's your process for the first uh, few weeks? It, it's quite simple. We pull them out of edge and we'll line them up. We're not gonna lay this first layer of trellis for about four to five days, but we're pretty lucky. We've got the four foot rolls of common culture. This room's only had three layers of trellis. We have rooms that have upwards of five, six layers of trellis. I'm like five, seven, and those plants are way up there, and I would love to get a closer look. Yeah, I think we're about high enough. I think there still might be some buds that are higher than us, though. This is what happens when things go right. You know, does every room turn out perfectly? No, that, that's not growing. This one does. This one turned out great, <laughs> and a lot of them do. The good news is a lot of them do. In cultivation, you take the wins when you get them because there's definitely a lot of losses to go around. Man, I just, I wish I could translate the, the aroma oh. and the density that you guys are producing in here. This is like the, the marathon, right? You've done everything you think you know you can do. You're all high-fiving each other, right? Well, there's a whole section of Grow Sciences that's not high-fiving yet. They're saying to themselves, okay, our job starts now. It enters the apparatus of getting it into the patient's hands and my partner, Mike, we're gonna have to bring him in because he owns that apparatus and is responsible for that experience to their hands. So I think it'd be fun to have him here anyway. Let's, yeah, uh, let's go grab Mike. Let's go grab the big guy. So Mike just got down off the ladders with Matt and he was talking about bringing the product 70% there, but we're not done yet. Absolutely, you can look at this and see that cultivation has done its job very well. Now is when you know, it transfers into the post-production side to make sure that what we see here is preserved all the way through. Minimal handling, you know, hand trimmed, proper dry, proper cure, all the above um, before it reaches our jar. And we ask the question, would you buy that aid? That's like a philosophy, a mantra of growth sciences, isn't it? A hundred percent. We rely completely on the product. You guys really do let the product speak for itself. You put it on center stage. And I understand that you guys uh, are working with someone pretty special to do that. That we are. We've got Eric Nugshots in the house this week. 
Um, this is his third or fourth visit in the last couple of years. It's a lot of fun when he comes to town and he's here shooting right now. Let's go peer over his shoulder and see what's up. Let's go. So, Mr. Eric Nugshots, we finally meet. Yes, we do. Your reputation precedes you, and it's so cool that you're working with Gross Sciences. So why did you guys bring Eric down to Gross Sciences? Because we're fans. I think Eric spends a lot of time educating the public on a lot of things that, frankly, people just don't even know to think about. It's really fun to read the stuff that he puts out as fun as it is to look at the visuals, I mean, that's what got us hooked. If you're looking at cannabis photography, it's him. The, you know, for the people who don't know who you are, let's can you can you give them a little insight into what you do? Yeah, sure. I mean, basically, I'm a cannabis photographer. So if it's a 360, it's got to be nice and straight. Uh, if it's a macro, I'm looking for you know pristine trichomes, obviously. And then at the very tips of colas, you have like little leaflets sticking out. Um, that's one of my favorite places to shoot. Sometimes the leaf will kind of taco up, and you get a nice like flat surface. But you know, all strains are different. So sometimes you don't get either of those things and you kind of have to roll with the punches and different challenge every day. It's super fun. What is this thing exactly? Yeah, this is uh, called the Flowertron. Yeah, it's just an interactive uh, display. You can, you can walk up, spin the wheel. It rotates the nug on the screen. You can cycle through, choose other ones. And these are all grow sciences, buds. Anytime he's ever represented our flowers in his photography, it is unified amongst this team that it's like, that's what it, that's what we wanted it to look like. That's, he captured it. Well, Eric, honored to be here at the same time you are. Thank it's you been so a much. pleasure. And I know these guys appreciate it as well. And uh, with that, looking forward to your new shots. Awesome, thanks so much for having me. Matt, we're stepping into the curing drying area and this is where, you know, you can grow the perfect plant, but you can make or break it here. All of the work comes down to this room. If it doesn't go well in here, it's, we're done. You'll end up with a hay smelling flower that no one wants to mess with, right? Yeah, so let's talk about the drying. Like, sure. Let's, let's run through the details. So we're gonna be anywhere from 67 to 72 degrees. We're gonna be anywhere from 45 to 55% humidity. Once again, we're not gonna reinvent the wheel. We're gonna be doing what has been tried and true for me over my entire career. Yeah, and, and I saw you're chopping and then putting like almost a, basically a whole, whole plant. plant. Yeah. We do whole plant drying here. So we take the whole plant down. We have about 140 plants in a row. So in a phase two room, that's five rows. They'll fit in each one of our dry rooms. Very standard. For me, drying comes down to environment, of course. Dehumidification being the number one, you're putting 500 pounds of wet material in a confined space, everything can go wrong. My tried and true, the last 20 years has been the Quest 205 dehumidifier. It's my tank, um, it comes with me everywhere. We have 45 of them in this building. I'm going to have another 200 of them in the expansion. They're who I go with, it always works. It is the most efficient. Um, there's just not enough good things I can say about it. It's one of those devices that I won't build a room without. Every cultivar is different. Almost every harvest is different. And it can take anywhere from eight to 14 days, depending on that, to where we're ready to bucket down and begin the cure process. Okay, so who's making the determination it's ready to come out of that drying room? You basically have Gavin, who runs this room. His entire goal is to make this stuff as smelly as possible, just straight up. So the Gavin method, is that like a, a little bit of experience with the touch and the feel? You guys doing a moisture meter? What's, what's We have going no on? moisture meter. Mm -hmm. We are as, I will call it bare bones as someone could be. We don't even have an expensive thermometer. We use the old school hygrometers. It's Gavin's intelligence, intuition, and gut instincts we go off of. And those have yet to fail me. He's bringing it um, basically out of the drying room and we're talking about curing now, really. It's not just out of the drying room. So he's involved on the harvest side. So he's watching it come into the drying room, allocating the space to each cultivar, making sure, oh, he looks at it and goes, I don't like these huge apple fritter colas in the middle of the room. Let's move those to the outside of the room. And that's why when people tell me they're always in search of automation, 
I think automation's great, and, I, and I'd love some great automation, but you're never gonna replace the critical players who make and break decisions on a daily basis and have to be dialed into the room in that way. And it's that simple. I mean, it really is. Uh, you're never gonna be able to replace that. I won't. And uh, I'm very lucky to have the team I have. Matt, I appreciate that. That's extremely honest. So I see them taking the plants down over here. Let's mm -hmm. go through the life cycle of a bud after right. it goes out of the drying room. Yep. So from the drying room, it'll go from the curing container to the trim room. The trimmers will trim it. The second they are done, that's gonna be put into one pound allotments inside the grove bags. From there, they're logged into our system and immediately enter cure in the vault room. I've been unhappy with so many different products in terms of curing. Grove bags just dropped a product, uh, their two pound curing bag, which has changed the game for us over the past few months. And we will not cure anything without them. How does the grove bag actually work? The goal of the grove bag is to not only preserve the terpene, preserve the flower quality, and maintain just an overall perfect atmosphere at 62% humidity. We think it achieves that pretty soundly. They're coming through for us big time. I think it's opened up the nose on our flower to a whole new level. And I think that just seeing the bud structure maintain, not get broken up, pieces fall off, being able to view it, everything about it, it's just such a more sound you know, way to care. And I'm always looking for those better options, so. So we made our way into your guys' processing room, and what is your role here? My name is Tanner. Um, I'm the uh, extraction manager here for um, Grow Sciences. I'm in charge of doing all the solventless that uh, everyone enjoys. So Matt, you know, your pens, I smoked it last night, super smooth, tasty. I saw you have one in your pocket. They're really innovative. And can you tell us a little bit more about Absolutely. why they taste the way they do? Took us 11 months to get there, and hundreds of thousands of dollars, and fighting, and yelling and just all sorts of crazy shit to get to the end product. We're extremely proud of it. The game changer about the cartridge is that it's a totally solvent-free cartridge. It's the only one on the market. Arizona's leading the way in rosin cartridges. So you're just talking about such a different flavor, such a different high, such a natural, real representation of the flower you started with. And that's a rarity. I mean, when you pick up 95% of the cartridges on the market and it's a distillation you know, made cartridge, you have no idea what terpene's been added to it. You don't even know what it started as. With our rosin cartridge, you know exactly what you're getting. Matches the lab testing that went to the rosin itself. It is a completely unadulterated cartridge and it's a real representation of what we were trying to accomplish. We've had a great relationship with 3Win. Heidi specifically has taken care of us in ways, whether it was helping us to design our boxes or putting us in contact with this. She has just gone so above and beyond that I'd be doing a disservice not to call her out. Besides the fact that Three Winds repping the C-Cell cartridge, which always has the best rates, lowest leakage rates. We don't get anywhere near as many returns. Before C-Cell got here, the cartridge market was a shit show. It was basically the cheapest and what garbage products and C-Cell kind of was the renaissance to cartridges. And let me just tell you that in the state license system, I would never have picked up a cartridge until I was at a dispensary and they said, you got to check out this C-cell cartridge. And I took a chance. And on the first drag, I remember being, whoa, that actually hit. Okay, we have something. And now we are here three years later and you've got multiple people with the C-cell, but there's three win and there's everyone else. And there's Heidi at three win, which that's all I'll say is I, I can't recommend her enough. And let's touch base because people were like, so is this guy saying resin with weird accent? <laughs> so, so why don't we define rosin? Rosin is a uh, is cannabis resins that are extracted uh, with applied pressure and heat. Rosin can be made from ice water hash, cannabis flour, sift, keef, um, basically the same stuff you'd find on the bottom of your grinder um, at home. We, uh, we use Rosin Evolution for our rosin bags, and we kind of had developed a relationship with them. We uh, had them make a custom bag for us um, a couple years back, and we still, to this day, continue to use that. They actually offer that bag on their website now. And then for all of our rosin, we use a 25 micron bag, but for the uh, mechanical separations, we use the 15. So these are our presses that we use. Um, this is uh, our workhorses uh, as far as making rosin goes. These uh, pure pressures are automated. So basically uh, they're all touch screen and you just go in and set up a recipe and you save it. And once it's saved, you can go into settings and use that recipe again. So 
for days where I have 2,000, 3,000 grams of hash to press, I can actually run both of these machines and turn my back and focus on other things while these things do the work for me, um, which is actually amazing and saves us a lot of time on production. Um, these machines we press about 50 grams at a time on. Um, we can do uh, more or less, but we like to stick between 40 and 50. Um, we can do, you know, a few thousand grams a day easily yeah. on these machines. I wouldn't want any other press um, in this lab to do the job other than these ones, specifically these ones, because like I said, they are automated and you can set the recipe up. Um, it makes working so much easier. Um, another thing we use is our amp equipment. Um, that is our washing vessel. Three months ago, before we got those washing vessels, we used to actually have to lift all of our buckets up um, and we used plastic trash bins. Washing eight hours a day, lifting up uh, heavy buckets. It gets tiring, especially when we're a production company and we actually wanna you know, produce more. The reason why we went with AMP is I actually have a personal relationship with uh, the owner and uh, his name's Josh. He's an, he's an awesome dude. He is completely different from cannabis brands and stuff that's out there because he is very one-on-one -on -one and he actually makes the product or has made the product before in a sense or has people to r d his equipment before it gets sent out so every piece of equipment that i've seen him send out is pretty much it's all unique and in its own so on a day we can get about 100 pounds washed uh, in one day, one work day. That's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. So I'm definitely proud to be working with AMP and I'm definitely happy that we are, uh, developed, we've are developed a really strong relationship with each other. Tanner, thank you so much for showing me around your guys' lab. I mean, you guys are definitely doing something different here with a lot of that solventless and it's tough to do at scale. Definitely uh, glad to have you here. Um, it was fun. This is where the would you buy that eighth really starts to take form. So it, it's a lot of attention to detail. So what kind of equipment do you guys lean on here in the trimming room? You know, Harvest More basically changed the game with the trim bin for a couple of reasons. First and foremost, you're not just sitting over a cookie sheet, which is where a lot of us were previously trimming on just any surface. You get to collect all your sift, which is just enormous for us. Um, and it's frankly comfortable. I mean, I've been using trim bins for years. Um, trim bins do a great job. I know they're working on some of their technology to even filter down more. But yeah, that's it. You got scissors, you got trim bins, and you got people. You know, that brings up a question that I have too. It's like, there's so many people that watch Cannacribs and they wanna know what are cannabis operations looking for in teammates? You know, you're gonna get in the door, drive passion, a love of cannabis, and what's gonna keep you here is a work ethic and ability to work within the team. And these people who have been with us from the beginning are gonna come with us on this journey. And I'm really excited by that. And I, I think they are too. I think that's why you stay here. <laughs> this is too weird. <laughs> We've gone from, you know, people buying Ziploc bags that are rolled up to what we have in front of us. And this is innovative. Can we touch base on your guys' packaging? This is an area that we have a lot of fun thinking about. There's two main things we care about when we're selecting our packaging. One is preservation. And the second thing that we care about is trying to have a bit of a wow factor. You know, I don't think I've ever seen packaging that I would say makes the bud as center stage as this. That is by design for sure. So this is a jar that we developed with a company named Canlock. We were able to create a vacuum seal. So we put the flower inside and then we evacuate 80% of the air inside of it. It's got the preservation box checked, right? And then when the customer gets it at home and they twist it open, you get a psh sound like opening a soda pop. And, May I? Uh, you, please, I'd love it. Yeah. And then mm. you've got the strain name on the side. Oh, you're just gonna keep popping them. On the larger quantities, we've got traditional Mylar. That's our Bigs bag, and that's all of our colas. I mean, that's that's the cream of the crop right there. I love that product more than anything. I wish we could put more of it out. 
And when our expansion is done, we will. Yeah, I don't know who doesn't like a big yeah. bag of wheat. So then the other one is our Smalls bag. Popcorn gets such a negative vibe. You know, we use the bag to, to tell a story about why we love Smalls. So that's the flower side of our packaging. Well, why don't we touch base on some of your concentrates? For sure. The concentrates for extracts, we use a company named Calyx that's just got a really clean container. You know, they, they clearly have an eye on detail for design, which is right up our alley, the things that we care about. It's a pinch and pull lid, so it's got the child resistant feature. It's got a nice clean glass underneath so you can see exactly what you're getting. Um, and then the artwork that's applied to the top, they do for us and you can see it's got that sort of nice sheen effect to it. It's just all around, I think, high end. I love that. We like the it. Part on top. It's oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. It's the little things that yeah. make a big difference. It's the little, yeah. it's inches. Mm -hmm. So the inches. yeah, the, the Calyx guys have done a lot of work for us to get to this point. I feel like it's like holding a little jewel. Yeah. You know, that's what it feels like. It's got heft. The mission you know? accomplished. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So they, they give us the preservation. You know, we're big fans of that. And we've been through a lot of concentrate containers and, and this is running away with the best one. You know, we've got an insert that allows us to tell about how it was made. In our case, solventless is such a huge part of our business. We wanted people to know like, hey, what does this even mean? There's a lot of that character that I'm getting here infusing your products. Like I'm looking at it here and it says- Oh, is the quote in there? Yeah, the quote in here, if you think you are too small to make a difference, try sleeping with a mosquito in the room. There you go. That's some deep shit. These witticisms, I feel like they, they come directly from the character of the people who work here. Yeah. We, we try to make everybody laugh just for a second and, and the quotes do that. And so the sticker is kind of that final piece to the box. All the stickers that we put in our box are a result of really fan artwork. You know, we put rosin on the cartridge. Again, a lot of people had never heard the term rosin or thought that it was being misspoken because they always heard resin so that people know that, oh, this is different than what's in every other pen I've ever smoked. For those people who Maybe you've tried vape cartridges and they're like, man, it just doesn't just doesn't smoke the same as real flour. Probably recommend they try rosin. You know, the only drawback that has to every other cartridge on the market is the fact that it reeks like you have a quarter pound of flour in your pocket when you have it. And that's because it is an actual representation of the flour in its truest form. Everything about it is just a different experience. I'm excited for you to try it. I am excited as well. Yo también. Guys, this line of hundreds of people behind you is a testament to what you've done in two years, which now I have to ask, like what's next in store for Grow Sciences? This is why we're working so hard to get our own dispensary, right? We've spent so much time engaging this community and, uh, and I think this is the result of all that hard work. And our friends at the local joint, they've allowed us to come in and do a takeover. We got to Bogart their space. Yeah. These kids are crazy though. It's a fucking hundred degrees out here. It is. These 100, kids are, 110. Yeah, these kids are nuts. Is it 110? And this is a medical market right now. With the passing of recreational, the demand is only going to increase. And it, it's really important for us to, to really be able to reach out and touch that patient and make sure they have a place where they can always go and find our product. I was gonna say too that I think one of the biggest things we'll see in Arizona is that if it goes legal, the companies that are gonna invest the millions of dollars that it takes to respond to that demand need a reason to get started, which is why we're definitely pro-legalization. And uh, is it a perfect bill? Far from it. But does it get us to that next step? Absolutely. It also removes felonies and it lets people expunge records, which is something that has to be discussed when we talk about legalization. So if we're gonna acknowledge legalization and say that we were wrong, then you have to go back and say, everyone we fucked with, we were wrong. And this bill does talk about expungement, but you gotta get everyone on board and show them that cannabis is here to stay. It's completely friendly. We're a member of the community. We're giving back. And you know, we're all very good people. And I mean, look at these kids, man. 110 degrees showing up to get their meds. Like, that's that. Let's talk about what's special about an event like this. 
New product drops, man. So first time ever. Yo! Yeah. First time ever baller jars of our live rosin. First time baller jars. We're making a forbidden pastry, which is forbidden fruit times hidden pastry into a diamond rosin sauce. First of its kind for the first time we've ever done it selling quarters of flour. And that might seem odd, but you know, the Arizona market's dictated by eighths and ounces. And because we're so sold out, we focus on our eighth product to get in everyone's hands. Today we launch quarters and I think it's time we go inside and take a look at what's going down. Yeah, let's go hang out with some fans. Okay, cool. So you guys are doing something I've never seen before. Yeah. It's like augmented reality? That's right. Okay, show me. This is important because, take a look, you've got display cases here, but not all dispensaries are created equal, particularly with their shelf space. The way that we figured out we could overcome that was to build something virtual. And then this becomes basically an anchor for an experience that we have leveraged to show off the things that we care about. So it's a chance for them to learn, again, how it's all made. That's one of the things we work really hard on. That's amazing. That's game changing. Absolutely. With cannabis now recreationally legalized in Arizona, Grow Sciences is set to push the boundaries of what's possible in boutique cannabis cultivation. Their passionate and hardworking team, along with their dedicated fans, assures this won't be the last we see of them. It'll be interesting to see how this company evolves in due time. Until then, subscribe and stay tuned for our next adventure. You get high with Grow Sciences, then I'm out of plug you. If you need some flashes to get high with, then I'm out of plug you. Or Matt, you know, it's really Matt, you know what I'm saying? But you know, we out here, man, you know, do your thing. You know? <laughs> Is this thing on? Okay. Can you uh, take pictures of my firstborn? Yeah. <laughs> Can they sit super still for 15 if minutes? If I get while really full spin? Yeah. <laughs>